start off with with the Miga link from a sitting position here. I'm gonna fix my camera a little bit. If a person is unable to Okay, if a person who is in the second or third phase of Parkinson's is unable to, to stand for a long period of time, there's a series of movement that you could do just using the, the megon. When sitting on a chair, you want to sit on, on something that, that braces the back that you could sit all the way back. The height of the chair should be just about the height of your knee. Okay, shouldn't be any higher, shouldn't be any lower. If you could get a chair that, that sits, that the knee bends at approximately 90 degrees, and you could sit up in this, this position here. Once you sit up in this position here, you're gonna try, try to keep the head steady. You're gonna to learn to use the eyes um, for movement. So you touch here and you hold, lightly touching on the Migan, the center of the palm here. So you're holding this, this position and you start falling in and out. Those are your first movements. After you do that a few times, you try a straight hand moving in and out. Now, these are exercises that you should practice on a constant basis. See what I did? I went out, in, and come back in this position here. Then you could roll it up. And again, the light pressure is on the foot and you roll it all the way up. But you don't bring the hands back like this because that's gonna affect the shoulders and, 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 the, and the neck. When you bring the hands up, you're not gonna bring them all the way back like this. You're gonna bring it at a slight angle this way. Therefore, the body could sustain it and it doesn't aggravate the, the shoulders, joints, or lower back. So when I bring my hand up and I said, bring, bring your hands up, you bring your hands up to a slight angle in, in this, this fashion here, and you bring your hand down. You don't try to bring it all the way back overhead. That's, that's much later. And then you try to move it top and bottom, top, and bottom, going back and forth, and then moving it from side to side, then rotating. Now, this is going to help to improve and also maintain some of the flexibility that, that you need, need to have and to keep. So you roll it back and forth, and then you try a rolling movement coming to the heart, down to the knees, all the way back and around in this fashion, and then move it again from side to side. Now, if you could move just a little bit more, you try to sit at the edge of the chair now. The floor again should be flat, bodies up, up straight this way. Bodies in this position. This way, you're still gonna do the same previous movements up, down, in, turn over, come back, turn over. You could widen the foot a little bit, just a little bit tad wider than the hip and still sitting up in this position. And then as you turn, you're not gonna twist the body, you're just gonna move to the direction of this, this knee or this leg, but I'm not gonna do this because if I make a full turn like this, what I'm gonna do is twisting the spine. So I'm going to shift a little bit here and then shift a little bit to this side. So back and forth, Not, nothing, nothing um, abrupt, nothing that's going to abuse the body, moving back and forth. And then come back to the center. Now you could extend one leg now, and then you could actually move, move a hip coming back and forth this way and then extend the next leg and you do the same movement back and forth. 
and then come back to the center and then sit in this position here. Okay, I'm going to stand up for a second. Now, the use of the, 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 the nigong is extremely important. The nigong is supposed to help you not just with, with, with uh, balance and coordination, but it also is going to help you with, with your breath, your breathing, and getting the breathing coordination um, with, with movements, and also exercise the eyes, the eye muscles as well. It's also going to help with circulation because circulation is also enhanced by the muscles being relaxed and the joints being relaxed, that will increase the circulation as well. So when we do the, the basic um, exercise um, with, with the nigang here, and we start off in this fashion, first of all, you're going to slightly bend your knees. Slightly bend the knees, engage the muscles here, and also takes the, the tension off the, the joint, which is the knee, knee itself, okay? That allow the tendons to hold the knee properly back in space. So you stand like this. But you don't do it profusely. You just do it very, very lightly, okay? And you hold from here. Start from the heart, heart level. You're in this position here, and you're gonna go down. First thing, take the eyes, this is designed specifically for a reason, and I know sometimes what it looks like. But this is our, our standard or our traditional um, nigangs. It's designed this way for specific reasons. Number one, when you touch the end, the ends are round, so you could touch it lightly, both ends. It is completely balanced on both sides and 12 inches long, to help you maintain a distance that you need to have when you're doing the exercise. That's why it's uh, approximately 12 inches long. The center is made to peer at, to look, look at, and to follow, to exercise the six muscles that control the eyes. In other words, you don't bend the head up and down and try to follow it this way. You learn to use the eyes separately. Also, with, with the movements of here, we do exercise like this. That's the reason for the lump on these sides, because we do exercise like this as well with it. These kind of exercise as well, so it's really smooth. And that's also for movement and flex flexibility. So when I start using the the Nikon from this position, my feet are a little bit apart, meaning that the heel is in line with the shoulders, the knees are slightly bent. I start here at the bottom of the heart, right, this portion here. My breathing has to coordinate with my movement. That means, at first, you're gonna have to consciously think about it meaning that movement that goes away from you, exhale, comes in towards you, inhale, okay? After a while, you start getting into a rhythm where you don't have to really concentrate on, on that too much. So you're staying in this position, you exhale, and you circle back. You're using the shoulders and the arms to get this kind of movement, but not just the shoulder and the arms are getting the exercise, Believe it or not, your ribs, rib cage, and lower back is getting some because the whole body is participating in, the, in that, that movement going back and forth. So you're standing and you go like this. This way. When you start your first exercise, and it said you move out this way. Don't drop the head, keep the head up. Take the eyes, look central of it. Slightly bend the knees and then exercise. One, two, and three. And when you bring it back, you shift the weight a little bit. Step back, step back on your, on your right foot. Touch the right heel. Now, when I say touch the right heel, 
Your heel is as a slight contour of roundness. You do not want to take away from that contour. You want to use it to your benefit. So you're going to roll using the contour of the heel, but not only the contour of the heel has that circle of motion, right here, this hip joints, knee joints, and ankle joints also have that circle of motion. So in order to do it, you're going to relax these joints. In fact, the joint should never be stiffened or hardened in any way. The joint should always be, um, be relaxed because your, your joint is just for one thing, for bending. That's all it is for. So when you sit back in this position, the, the hips, the, the knees, the ankles, the arms, and everything else is getting involved. So it's almost like you're tracing your body all the way around and come back here. So you're going to trace the body downward. So you do like this. And you don't try to stem out really far, okay? You're gonna go as far as when this, when your foot, the pad of your foot touches the ground. That's as far as you go. Then you roll back. So using the contour, you roll in and back. So you keep a steady rhythm this way. So basically you're exercising the whole body, although it seems like there's more emphasis on one side than the other. Everything is being exercised because I'm using my eyes to track at the same time. I'm making the movements and I'm using the whole body to participate along with breathing and coordination. And then I would do the same thing to the next side here. Any movement that you do on one side is always has to be bilateral. Okay, both sides has to get the same kind of exercise. So I do the same to the next side. And then I would come back to the center part here and repeat it the same motion three times. And after repeated three times, the teacher would say, step back. You can step back with your left foot, lean, and then you're leaning back like this. Put in the strength of the pressure on this foot. This time, you're not only going to trace here, you're going to trace the whole body coming this way. So the movement is more wider and more pronounced. So you're tracing this way and you come back. And you notice I'm not doing this. I come back to this angle that I talked about earlier, share this angle here, comes back to the body, trace and move. Using the heel at all times, so rolling on the heel. And as soon as the sole of the feet, touches, that's when my rise begin. And then I step back with the next foot and do exactly the same thing, the same rolling position. And then I will come back to the center and I will do the same thing again, still following my breath, still following the high movements because this is center. After I do that three times, I will turn it sideways like this. And now we're going to work on the rest of the skeletal system going back and forth to maintain the balance, okay? This has, this second movement here is extremely essential because what that's gonna cause is, is gonna help with the um, blood circulation. It's gonna take the tension off, off the joint and it's also gonna help with your balance and coordination as well. So you're gonna be using the whole skeletal system to move like this going back and forth. So basically, you're, you're kind of making a figure eight with the body. And if you remember um, years ago when people had the hula hoop, this was the kind of movement. So it's, it's kind of circles back and forth. But you have to make all the joints pliable. You don't make any joints stiff whatsoever. So you're moving from side to side. And in, any side that you move, that's the hand that dominates the top. So you're moving from side to side. So it dominates moving from side to side here. Back and forth. And after you do that a few times, then you circle. Again, I'm not grabbing it and holding it. I'm doing this very light touch. And then I rotate it inward, still using a light touch, not holding but rotate it inward like this, and then reverse the same action. 
going outward. This is a, a very vital, vital thing. And like I said, you could do it from a sitting position, standing position, or a half standing, half, half standing position. That'll be good. Now, one, one of the things that, that, um, that I also discovered, if, if, you, if you have um, some limitations with the standing or sitting for a long period of time, if you could get a chair or a stool that reached up really high and you could sit back on it, just like this is enough to rest, you could still do some of the exercise from, from that position, just enough to raise, raise you up from that position. Okay? so we